Welcome viewers. I am Nilut Valsutia from Department of Economics in Gorgon College, Hivohagor, Assam. In this video, I am going to discuss a very simple quantitative method used in economics. The topic of today's discussion is application of optimization technique in economics. This video includes what is the meaning of optimization in economics and what are the conditions of optimization. I also add one example on how to solve optimization problems. This video includes only unconstrained optimization with one explanatory variable. The problems of constrained optimization are not covered in this video. For better understanding of this session, the learners require knowledge on basic rules of differentiation and basic microeconomics. So, uh, what does optimization mean in economics? Optimization means maximizing or minimizing the objective function of a firm or a businessman or a consumer or a government and so on. For example, a firm always wants to maximize its profit. So, profit maximizing is its objective function that it wants to maximize. Similarly, cost minimization, revenue maximization may be some other objective functions for a firm or a businessman. Likewise, a consumer always wants to maximize his or her utility. This is one of the objective functions of a consumer. Similarly, for the government, tax revenue maximization may be one of the objective functions. Let us discuss how optimization technique is used in economics. Let us assume a function y is equal to f of x. Now, maximization of the function y is equal to f of x requires two conditions. The necessary condition is dy by dx is equal to 0, which is also known as the first order condition. And the sufficient condition is d square y by dx square is less than 0. This is known as the second order condition also. Let us see the graph of the function y is equal to fx and we are to find out the maximum point on the curve. It is to be noted that the slope of the curve in its maximum or minimum point is always zero and since the slope of the function or a curve is given by its derivative so the slope of the function y is equal to f of x is written as dy by dx which is equal to 0 at the highest point on the curve. This is how we will be able to find out the highest point on the function and its corresponding value of x. Now, the second order condition d square y by dx square less than 0 ensures that the function y is equal to f of x tends to slope downward after attaining its maximum point. On the other hand, Minimization of the function y is equal to f of x requires two conditions. The necessary condition is dy by dx is equal to 0 and the sufficient condition is d square y by dx square is greater than 0. The necessary condition or first order condition gives us the minimum value of x at the minimum point on the curve or the function and the sufficient and second order condition d square y by dx square greater than 0 ensures that the function or the curve slopes upward after attaining the maximum point. Now let us take one problem. The total revenue and total cost function of a monopolist is given by tr is equal to 29q minus trice q square and tc is equal to 1 by 3q cube minus 6q square plus twice q plus 40. We are asked to find out profit maximizing output and maximum profit. We know profit is always equal to tr minus tc that is total revenue minus total cost and here we are asked to find out the profit maximizing output which means that at what value of q the profit of the firm will be the maximum and we are also asked to find out the profit 
which will not be very difficult to find out after getting the value of q. Let us solve the problem. The total revenue and total cost functions are given as tr is equal to 29q minus twice q square and tc is equal to 1 by 3 q cube minus 6q square plus twice q plus 40. By subtracting tc from tr, we get the profit function as minus 1 by 3 q cube plus thrice q square plus 27 q minus 40. Now let us apply the first order condition of profit maximization that is d pi by dq is equal to 0. Now by differentiating the profit function with respect to q, we get minus q square plus 6q plus 27 is equal to 0. Now multiplying both sets by minus 1, we get q square minus 6q minus 27 is equal to 0. Then we apply the factorization method to solve this equation and by doing so, we get q square minus 9q plus thrice q minus 27 is equal to 0. And finally, we get the value of q as 9 or minus 3. Let us check the sufficient condition. We need to find out the value of d square pi by dq square. So d square pi by dq square is equal to d dq of d pi by dq. Since the value of d pi by dq is already obtained while dealing with the first order condition, so we put the value of d pi by dq and differentiate it again with the respect with respect to q, and it is equal to minus twice q plus 6. Okay. Now if output q is equal to 9, d square pi by dq square is found to be minus 12, which is less than 0. It means that the second order or sufficient condition is satisfied when q is equal to 9. But if we put q is equal to minus 3, the sufficient condition is not satisfied. Since d square pi by dq square is found to be 12 when q is minus 3. We can reject q is equal to minus 3 without testing it in the sufficient condition because q represents output in this particular problem and output will never be negative. Hence, the level of output at which the firm's profit is maximum is 9. Now, in order to find out the profit, we just need to put the value of q is equal to 9 in the profit function and after calculation, we get the profit as 200t. And the learners may go through the book Basic Mathematics and its application in Economics by Professor Srinath Burwa and Mathematics for Economics by Mehta and Madnani. And I thank you all for watching my video.